What's up everybody? Justin here, do my Wrestle Kingdom New Japan Pro Wrestling Wrestle Kingdom 12 review. It was uh this morning, very early. Started at I believe 1 or 1.30. It was a pre-show battle royal. But it wasn't a normal battle royal. It was pinfalls. So it was a very long show. As I said, the the main show started at 2 a.m. And went on till I think like 6.50. So very long show. But I'm glad I watched it. It was really worth it. So the pre-show had a pre-show rumble. People that were in it. Takamichi Noku, former WWF Light Heavyweight Champion, former WCW Superstar Eugene Nagata. Hope I say his name right, Eugene Nagata. Anyways, I remember him from WCW. <clears throat> from Ring of Honor, Delirious. I believe he might be the head of creative in Ring of Honor, I know he's a trainer for the Ring of Honor school. So Delirious was in there. He was in bare feet. He didn't last that long. So it came down to the final two were Cheeseburger. And uh, I'm going to have trouble seeing this guy's name. Masa Hiro Kaori Hari. He won it. The guy's a cancer survivor. It was good to see him win. If I got his name wrong, just look up the results. I apologize. So the next match was on the pay-per-view. The first match of the big show. The Young Bucks challenging for the IWGP Junior Tag Team titles. I did not want the Young Bucks to win, but they won. And they're now seven-time New Japan Junior Tag Team Champions for the seventh time the Young Bucks win. F the Young Bucks. I don't like them. So up next was the Never. It's called the Never Open Weight Main or Never Open Weight Man Six Man Tag Team Titles Gauntlet Match. You had guys in this. That I've recognized. That I know. Zack Sabre Jr. War Machine. Trent Beretta. Uh, Haku Son. One of his sons. Tanya, Tama Tango. Or Tama Tango. Something like that. Anyways. Trent Beretta's team. I forget the name of his other two partners. I apologize. But Trent Beretta. And his two partners win. Trent Beretta wins his first gold in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Trent Beretta hit the Dude Buster. One, two, three, his team wins. So they're now the never open weight six man tag team champions. I guess that means never open weight tag team titles. I think that means there's no weight classes that any size can challenge for those titles. So up next was when it started getting really great. When Wrestle Kingdom 12 started getting really good. <coughs> Cody Rhodes. I'm not going to just call him Cody. Cody Rhodes. With his very attractive wife, Brandy Rhodes. Cody taking on Koto Abushi. Koto Abushi's out of this world. He's great. He's really good. And Cody's been very good too. Since he left WWE, Cody has done some of the best work of his entire career. Has been in Ring of Honor and New Japan and on the Indies. So Cody against Kota Ibushi, this is really good. Cody hit a crossroads off the ring apron to Kota Ibushi. The, the guy landed on top of his head on the floor. Or on part of the ramp in the mat. But he still landed on top of his head. So that was insane to see Cody hit a crossroads on Kota Ibushi off the apron to the floor. 
but it wasn't over yet because Kota Bushi fought back. They're back in the ring. Kota Bushi hits a Phoenix Splash. One, two, three. Kota Bushi wins. Very good match. So up next was for the IWGP Tag Team Titles. Davy Boy Smith Jr., the son of the British Bulldog, great worker, and his partner Lance Archer, used to be Lance Hoyt in TNA Impact Wrestling, or before they were Impact. So Lance Hoyt, not Hoytcher, Lance Archer, Davy Boy Smith Jr., defending against Sadata, or Sonata. And evil. This was awesome. This was hard hitting. It was stiff. And I loved it. Very hard hitting match. The champions actually lose. We have new IWGP Tag Team Champions. Sadata. I think that's how you say his name. And evil. So next we had a hair versus hair match. And it's, it's supposed to be a death match. But it wasn't really a death match at all. Gato take on Suzuki. Suzuki, the guy's a legend. Guy started a mixed martial arts company, Pancrase, which was great. The guy's a legend. So Suzuki against Gato. Gato wins. Suzuki in his crazy hairstyle, he shaved his own head at the end. So now, more notes, more matches because it's a very long show. Up next was great. It was fantastic. It was a pleasure to watch. For the IWGP Junior, Junior Heavyweight Championship. You had Koshida take you on the villain, Marty Skrull. Marty Skrull, by the way, is the champion. Will Ospreay in... Ton Taco Hot or Ton Takahashi. This match was so great, so fast paced and awesome. Will Osprey at one point they all went to the outside to brawl, like in a ramp, in a entrance way, not a ramp way, but in a different entrance way. Will Osprey ends up climbing a scaffold or climbing a giant scaffold that was holding this lighting set up, probably. And Will Ospreay is up there. Guy's like 18 feet up. God does a moot salt on everybody else. That was insanity. Will Ospreay, I've seen him before a lot. I've seen him in Ring of Honor before. Will Ospreay is great. The guy is. The guy's a great cruiserweight. The guy's a, forget cruiserweight. The guy's a great wrestler. The guy's innovative. The moves he does. Will Ospreay wins and is a new IWGP Junior Heavyweight Champion. That four-way was really great. Really great. Up next, we had the IWGP Intercontinental Championship. Tanahashi, the champion, defending against Jay White. This was good. It was hard-hitting. Tanahashi wins, retains the IC title. Now, this, in my opinion, it was the main event. It wasn't for the IWGP Championship, but it was the match I wanted to see the most. And it was the main event to me. Kenny Omega versus Chris Jericho. The Cleaner versus Y2J. Alpha versus Omega. It was awesome. It was fantastic. It's five stars. It was great. I have a lot of notes. A lot of notes on it. The first 11 minutes of the match. It was just a hell of a fight. Insane fight. At one point you had. Kenny Omega. Uh, Jericho. Jericho got thrown over the guardrail. He's by the American commentary announce table. Where Don Callis was and Kevin Kelly. Kenny Omega 
does a springboard off the top rope, misses Jericho, or goes through the table, and takes out Don Callis. That was awesome. And then you had just ins insane action after that. After Kenny went through the table, took out Don Callis. You had Jericho. They got back in the ring. Jericho hit a, his springboard drop kick. And Kenny Omega's on the other side of the ropes. Jericho hit his springboard drop kick right to the knee of Kenny Omega. That was great. Then after that, Jericho hit a lion salt. That was great to see. And Jericho was pretty over. There were a lot of Y2J chants in the crowd from the Japanese fans. And I saw some fans they showed in the crowd that looked like they were American fans that actually traveled there. So Kenny Omega was probably more over, but Jericho was really over. And at one point Jericho, before they got back in the ring and he did a springboard dropkick to Kenny Omega's knee, Jericho pushed the ref down and then his son, the referee's son was there. And Jericho put him in the walls of Jericho. Lion Tamer. That was awesome. So back into the ring. Back to the match. Kenny Omega hits a swanton. Very beautiful looking swanton over the top rope onto the ramp. Taking Jericho out. And then we had Jericho... And Kenny Omega swan town over the top is called the Rise of the Terminator. That's what it's called. So back into the ring, Kenny Omega's in the walls of Jericho for a pretty long time. Kenny grabs a can of, I don't know what it was, hairspray or something, some type of chemical spray, and he tells Jericho, hey Jericho, Jericho looks at him and he sprays Jericho in the eyes with it. That was great. Jericho is really selling it, saying, I can't see, I can't see. And then he started telling someone to give him a towel. So then Jericho bashes. He set up a chair on the top and middle rope. Had a chair set up, and Jericho bashes Omega's face into it about four times. He gets busted open eventually and starts bleeding. And Don Callis was going insane he's really selling it saying he's busted open he's bleeding buckets well he wasn't really bleeding buckets because the blood actually evaporated from his sweat so back to more notes on this epic alpha versus omega match <clears throat> jericho went off the was on the top and got the chair kicked in his face but he held on to the top turnbuckle so he did not, or held on to the, the ropes. So he didn't go through the table on the outside of the ring. That was set up. Jericho set up a table on the outside. But Omega kicks him in the face again. And Jericho falls, crashes through the table on the outside. It actually cut Jericho on his uh, leg. Right under his ass. He was cut. And he's bleeding. So after that. Kenny Omega back into the ring. Kenny Omega with a running knee. One, two, Jericho kicks out. I thought it was over there. And then Jericho locks in another Waz of Jericho. Takes him back to the middle of the ring. Locks him in like a lot the old school lion tamer. Very long. A very long Waz of Jericho on Kenny Omega. He would not tap. And then Kenny Omega picked up Jericho at one point for his finisher, the Danger, so I forgot what it's called. Kenny Omega's finisher picks him up, slams our head on, into the map. <clears throat> so, Omega is about to go for his finisher. Jericho countered it. You know, rolled it up, put him in that long was of Jericho. That was awesome. So then Kenny Omega, after he hit his finisher on Jericho, Jericho gets his hand on the rope. One, two, Jericho got his hand on the rope. Then Jericho gets back up. Kenny Omega gets back up. Both guys are spent. They beaten the hell out of each other. And they went over like 35 minutes at least. 
Jericho gets back up, Omega's up. Cold breaker hit on Kenny Omega, but Kenny kicks out. Then we had Kenny Omega hit his finisher on Jericho on top of the chair in the ring. One, two, three, Kenny Omega wins. Epic match, five-star match. I loved it, I enjoyed it, and I'm very glad I watched it live and saw it live. Or else I probably would have had a ton of people tweeting me on Thursday during the day. A ton of people would have been tweeting me, telling me about the match and who won. And I didn't need to know that. I wanted to watch it live. Why? Why did I watch Wrestle Kingdom 12 live? Because I love wrestling. And I'm a passionate pro wrestling fan. I will admit, I... WWE's number one to me. I love them the most, but I love pro wrestling. <clears throat> so, now the main event. Okada defending the new IWGP heavyweight title. It was a hell of a match. Let's listen to the finish. It was a hell of a match. He's shot, but he's holding on to the challenge. Very nice clothesline there. Okada wins, retains. That big clothesline. Guy did a backflip. Knocked out cold. Okada wins and retains. Okada retains. Okada, the guy is great. The guy's the guy's out of this world good. Okada's really good. Just like Koto Bushi, just like I said, Will Offspray. Okada is great. The guy is great. Okada wins still IWGP champion. NATO gave it a hell of a fight. NATO's also very, very, very good, but NATO came up short. Okada wins, still IWGP champion. Final grade for Wrestle Kingdom 12. It was a long show, but that didn't bother me. Final grade, it gets, it gets an A, not an A plus, but an A. Very good show. I really enjoyed it. Give me your thoughts, give me your grade, what you would have grade Wrestle Kingdom 12 if you watched it. Give me your grade under the comments. Hope you enjoyed my Wrestle Kingdom 12 review. Bye for now, everybody.